Hello, hello, Old Twit Talks Cars. I hope you're well, keeping safe, and enjoying the beautifully sunny weather that I can see through my skylight here. Uh, so, believe it or not, episode 10 of Old Twit's Pre Classic Predictions. So, who'd ever thought we'd get this far? Uh, not me, that's for sure. Um, today, now you may know if you watch these that I have a penchant for uh, French cars, either small French cars or big French cars. Not so keen on the medium sized ones, but uh, today we're looking at a big French car and we're looking at the Peugeot 607. Now, if there was ever a car that has been slightly forgotten by society and represents at the moment, I believe, astounding value, I use that word advisedly, then it's our friend the Peugeot 607. Uh, yes, people go, oh, they're unreliable and they break down and everything else. Well, like every big car, they're unreliable and they break down when not looked after properly. So whether that's a Beamer, a Merc, a whatever else you're gonna have, a Jaguar, they'll all be the same if they're neglected. Oil isn't changed, cam belts aren't changed, maintenance schedule isn't maintained at least roughly. Let's jump straight into it. I want to tell you how many there are on how many left.co.uk. We'll look at one that's sold on eBay and then we'll score the car and we'll take it from there. So the Peugeot 607 is an executive car produced by the French automaker Peugeot from September 1999 to June 2010. Across the world it's known by several nicknames including the French cruiser Lion King and the spaceship. The 607 along with the smaller 407 were both superseded by the 508 in March 2011. The 607 was launched in October 1999 to replace the already discontinued 605. It used its predecessor chassis but had an all new, more modern exterior design. The engine range was completely new however. Equipment levels were also really high with all models getting air conditioning, CD player, electric windows, 8 airbags, anti-lock braking, tyre pressure monitor and central locking as standard. There was also an AMVAR 9-stage electronic damping control available as an option. The 607 was restyled in November 2004, with its most notable modifications being the new front end and the 2.7 HDI V6 engine with the 204 PS output mated to a new 6-speed automatic gearbox which is the same as you find in the Citroen C6. During 2008, the 607 was withdrawn from the United Kingdom owing to poor sales. The car was originally available with three petrol engines and two diesel engines. I think the sweet spot of the range is probably the 2.2 HDI diesel. I think this is a comfort orientated car. So having a petrol is probably not gonna cut it for you. You're gonna be cruising up and down the motorway or the autobahns or the auto routes of Europe. And the 2.2 HDI diesel with the automatic box, I think, is a great compromise between economy and power. The interior of the 607 is a nice place to be. Drivers and passengers are separated by a main console that houses the controls for the standard climate control system, the audio controls, and the optional satellite navigation slash TV. There are some splashes of chrome and either wood effect or black applique finish, and the overall ambiance is really very impressive. This is an interior of quality which will give other marks The multiplex wiring system allows for a host of neat electronic functions to be shoehorned into the 607. 
the double glazed glass, the tyre pressure monitor on each wheel, the parking assistance radar system to guide you safely into the tightest of spaces, side lights that automatically illuminate in failing light, the rear view mirror that darkens when someone's on full beam behind you, the stereo volume that rises and falls in line with your speed, and particularly clever rain sensitive wipers. It's all here, and it was all pretty innovative when these cars were launched, less so now of course. The level of build quality is generally excellent, but there have been some issues with the four-cylinder petrol engines. Stalling, especially the two-litre version, is by no means uncommon, so try to ensure you start the engine from cold on your test drive. There's also the known weakness of this engine family, the timing belt. Make sure it's been changed every 30,000 miles. The original 2.2 HDI engine feels pretty good. Uh, it's hardly any slower than the original 3 litre V6 flagship, so the 0 to 60 time is only 0.7 of a second adrift of the of the big V6. The engine has that gutsy feel that a good turbo diesel installation should have. Even better, however, was the 2.2 litre twin turbo HDI that came along in 2006. Could offer up to 44 miles per gallon on a run and a 9.3 seconds 0 to 60 sprint. The thirsty V6 option really made no sense as a new buy, but if you can find one now with a good service history, then it makes a lot of sense to consider that, that car as well. So really stick with the bigger diesel engines would be my advice. General issues with these cars, like a lot of big French cars, I think have been exaggerated over time. Normally they'd be cars that haven't been maintained properly and you're going to get issues with any car that isn't maintained properly. I don't believe these cars should be inherently any more unreliable than a big Mercedes, a big BMW or a big Jaguar. Given the amount of sensors that the French like to put on their cars, however, a lot of issues can spring from erroneous information that the sensors are giving. So they're relatively easy to replace and relatively low value. So my first port of call whenever an issue crops up on a big French car is to check the sensor, probably replace it if it's easy to do, and then still see if the problem persists. Often it doesn't. So here we are on hamleyleft.co.uk, Peugeot 607 plunked in the top and again because there's quite a lot of iterations of different models and engine sizes we've got a fair old list here. Um, the short story is that there are 731 of these cars left on the UK roads today. Now obviously some of these, some of the more niche models, 607 SV is one. 607 SE V6 Auto 7. So within that number, there's some quite small niches available. So it's worth checking of the car that you're looking at of how many there's left, because obviously some are rarer than others. Because of the nature of the car, you know, big Luxo barge, uh, there's quite a lot of the 607 executives left, 208, and that is the highest number of any particular model left. So pretty rare. What's sold on eBay cars? Well, there's not a lot on here to be fair. Let's have a quick look back. So we're back in the sold ones as, as is our norm. Um, and I'm not sure how long they keep the sold ones on for, but basically there's four here. The top one I'm ignoring because it spares or repairs, three litres of petrol. I'm also ignoring that one at 12,999 quite low mileage it's a manual I don't think the manual is probably the uh, one to have in this um, car so I've gone for this one which sold in June four bids on that one so not that many and it's the HDI 607 auto diesel which I think is typical sort of sweet spot for this car now annoyingly when you get into this most of the pictures are all way, are the wrong way around, which isn't particularly helpful. What I'm going to try and do is turn these for you when I edit the video. So uh, it's a nice sort of French Peugeot-y red. Um, 
looks very straight. You've got the, these are the right way, aren't they? That's great, thank you, Mr. Seller. You've got the black leather here. You've got the TV screen, as this is the executive. So you've got all the toys and all the bells and whistles in here, which should be great. You've got a nice little map look, which is quite retro of what your gears do, uh, which I quite like. 103,880 miles, so I don't think that's a disaster by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, I thought this was, I don't know if you can see that on screen, but that looked like horribly crazed paint on the rear wing there, but actually it's one of those strange concrete uh, fence things from the 70s <laughs> reflecting in the lovely lustrous paint. So I was a bit concerned to start with, but no, that is fine and dandy. And there, oh again, that one's on the squeeze, that's the back for you. So sorry about those pictures, hopefully I can sort those out for you. Automatic diesel, it's a 2.2 diesel, uh, so good power, good economy. Uh, red HGI Auto, gorgeous car in near perfect condition. There's been a loved family car that is comfortable and drives perfectly. Looked after with regular oil and filter changes, tyre changes, some service history. Only advisories on last MOT was tyres and they've been replaced. What I can't get over is that car was a thousand pounds. And I think at 103,000 miles you've got 50, 60, 70,000 miles left in that car quite easily. It's a thousand pounds, you'll waft around like the president of France. Your only alternative to this car, I believe, is the car that I've got is a Citroen C6 and a decent one of those in this sort of condition. Uh, Citroen C6 is going to be four and a half to five and a half grand. So that's the difference. This is a thousand pounds. So scoring time. This car does well actually because they're cheap as chips, which clearly helps and uh, you know a lot of the other criteria they do pretty well in so let's start with cost so in terms of cost as you'll see these cars are excellent value at the moment i mean what does a grand get you nowadays really um a, a big fridge um a big telly half a decent camera um, so uh, for that money, you can get big French Lux so barge that uh, you know is going to transport you in comfort for many a happy mile. So for cost, I'm giving this car a very competitive nine. In terms of mileage, well, the cars uh, there are some high milers out there, but there's also some decent milers. So I think for our budget, if you spent a bit more and went to a couple of grand, I think you'd get a car that done 50, 60 thousand miles, and those cars are for sale at the moment on the market. So no problem with that. The one we looked at was just a tiny shade over uh, 100 thousand miles for a grand. So I'm giving mileage a seven. Rarity, well. That sort of depends on the model that you go for. As you've seen, some models and some engine and spec combinations are very rare indeed, with literally just a handful of cars available. Uh, in total, there's a little over 700 uh, licensed for use on the roads in the UK today. So that's pretty rare, well under our thousand um, spurious uh, target number. So very happy with that. So in terms of rarity, I've gone for a seven. Plus factors, well, you know, you're not gonna buy one for an exciting drive through the twisties. This is a comfort orientated mile muncher for sure. So in terms of plus factors, I suppose I've gone for specification. Um, these things are loaded with kit. Even the, even the base models have got a really high level of kit. Um, you've got lots of room. They're a comfortable car. They've got a huge and cavernous boot. So if you want a really cheap mile munching family car, then this would be a great car for you. However, set the pulses racing, it's not going to do, I suspect. So for that reason, I've gone for a slightly measly four. In terms of usability, I mean, great. If anything, they're a little bit too big probably for city use, but you genuinely can get five people in here and their luggage and you're going to travel in comfort and you're going to do 40 plus miles per gallon with one of the diesels and people are going to look at you either because they think you're mad or they think you're really cool and the great bit is you really never know which it is so I always decide for me 
that it's because they think I'm really cool. So in terms of usability, I give this car a seven. So in total, the Peugeot 607 has scored a very respectable 34 points, which puts it near the top of our leaderboard, I believe, from memory. So that's great news. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope it inspires you to go and look at some really great value French cars, German cars, British cars that are out there at the moment. Get involved. Do it sensibly. Do it with your head and not your heart. And things probably won't probably won't go too wrong. Um, if they do, don't blame me. So let's hope to see you again. Please subscribe if you are interested in the type of stuff I do. Please give me a thumbs up and like this if you have indeed liked it. If you didn't like it, then it would be great if you just sort of drifted away in silence because then it wouldn't hurt my feelings. So I hope to see you again soon. Stay safe and keep looking out for those pre-classic predictions. <laughs>